do you think this is just range-bound movement at the moment or, or sort of a more meaningful jump? I think it's more likely range-bound. I mean, if we look at what we've done against the euro so far this year, we've moved in a narrow range. Um, we're pretty close to where we've been on average. And the only thing you can say is we're all sufficiently bearish that the pound rallies about twice as fast as it falls on, you know, on any piece of good versus bad news. But I, I, we'll probably go on doing this for a while longer. One thing that you point out in your, your regular notes that you think perhaps is overlooked is how strong the correlation has been between both the euro and the pound when looking against the dollar, even if it's moving for a UK-focused piece of news or a Europe-focused piece of news. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think, you know, again, sterling is, is, is weak. We're bearish, the news is bad, we've got Brexit coming, and at the margin we'll blame everything on, on, on good or bad news from that. But, but in reality, I think we can't fall that much further, so we just get dragged around by that bigger relationship between the euro and the dollar. So euro dollar bounced off uh, its, its year's low yesterday, and so did the pound against the dollar, give or take. Uh, now, the broader dollar index up 2% for October. Uh, what do you make of that? Start of a, a more meaningful trend there, or, or just a sort of small bounce. Mm, there's, there's probably more to go. It's not how I thought the year would play out. But at this point in time, the European economy is losing momentum. We still have political risk in Europe. I think the danger, almost the biggest danger, uh, is that after the G20 meeting at the end of November, we may well see further weakness in the Chinese yuan. All of that supports the dollar. Meanwhile, look, you know, tomorrow we'll probably see 3% wage growth, another solid gain in employment. Uh, and we'll be talking about when the Fed next raises rates, unless equity markets turn south again. Uh, in terms of the Chinese yuan, 10-year lows this week, everyone's saying that the 7 level is, is an important psychological level, and, and if we cross that, that could sort of spark a more meaningful move to the downside of the Chinese currency. Do, do you buy into that? Do psychological levels matter here or not? I, I guess that, I mean, that they must do at least at some extent. I mean, in the big scheme of things, I think the story is more that you've had a 30% real appreciation of the yuan in, in effective terms over the last decade with an economy that's slowing, a current account surplus that's vanishing, why would they not want to allow their currency to weaken against a stronger dollar? I think they just don't want it to be a one-way bet. So they've stopped us here for, I don't know whether it's six months or, you know, I don't know how long they've stopped us here for, but mm -hmm. after that, they'll let it go again. Uh, in terms of the, the hopes uh, of things improving, whether we're talking about getting past the midterms, getting past the, the, the G20, as you said, do, do you think either of those could be catalysts for, for the trade talks to improve, or, or are you sceptical? I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sceptical in the sense that so the, the, the midterms, I mean, we'll see how we go, you know, in terms of what the focus will be, whether it's on, you know, tackling a split house or, or whether it's on tackling um, the, the need to get re-elected uh, by 2020 and in the next election. But um, it's hard to see the U.S. administration backing off. So I think we're set for continued at least at the very least, strains. Uh, let's bring it back to, to the Fed. You mentioned that uh, and the data we're, we're getting tomorrow. What's your forecast? And uh, do you think the equity market volatility and comments from the president will play into the Fed's minds or will they just focus on the data that we get tomorrow and, uh, and elsewhere? I think at the moment they're focusing on the data. So if we do, so there's very helpful, if that's the right term, for wage growth, uh, base effects from last year when, when average hourly earnings fell in the aftermath of the two hurricanes we'd had last autumn. Uh, the, the, the result of that is we're almost certain to get an acceleration in wage growth above 3%. Um, if we get that, I think that's going to keep the Fed looking and saying, unless, unless the equity market you know, has November every bit as bad as October, I think we're still on track to get another rate hike and to be talking about how much further we go next year.